So in this section, we're going to cover the concept of security in PARS and specifically how to secure your data. Now, PARS has a number of ways which it provides, which, which it makes available to you to secure your data and your system. So the first way is with security keys. And you've seen this already with the app ID and the master key, which we set up when we set up our example project. And that's what you've seen us use in all of the examples so far. When we set up PARS in our client code, we initialize it with the app ID. So your app ID is identifier, which uniquely identifies your PARS instance. Your master key is it's a master password. So you should never, ever, ever put that password in the public domain. But the problem with this approach is that, especially with JavaScript, um, anybody can view your code. If you're running in a web browser, for instance, anybody can just view source, look at the JavaScript file, and from reading the JavaScript file, it can find your app ID. So no matter what, using an app ID isn't really that secure. Anybody else can just then take your app ID, initialize their own PARS server code or PARS client code, and then start reading and writing to your database. So PARS has other mechanisms which it uses to add security to your application. And also, I'm just going to just talk for a second about master key. So the master key is something that you always keep private. You never, ever share that in your source code, in your client source code. It is absolutely a kind of a top level admin password. You should never share this with anybody. So the second way it provides to add security to your application is something called the client class creation. Now you've probably noticed as we've been going through this course that you didn't have to go into the dashboard and create a class manually. PARS automatically created a class for you the first time it detects a save from your client code. It also automatically tries to determine the schema of that class from the properties of the object that you're trying to save. Now that's really useful as you're developing, but you can imagine, again, if somebody got access to your app ID, they could just go crazy and start creating all kinds of classes on your database. So one of the things that PARS lets you do is it lets you switch that off when you move to production. So by default, the client class creation is set to true, which means that anybody, uh, anybody via client code can create classes and change the schema of classes. But once you go to production, you should switch that off. And then the only people who should be able to change classes or add classes or delete classes or change schemas are people who have logged in via the master key. And one way to log in via the master key is to use the PARS dashboard. So we'll cover this in one of the final lectures when we release our PARS server to production. I'll show you how to switch off client class creation. So the number three is something called class level permissions. And what this is, is a really high level set of permissioning that you can specify on an entire class. So for instance, player is one of the classes that we have. And you can specify uh, via the dashboard, for instance, you can specify that only admins or only ASIM can edit any player, but everybody can read the players. And the final method of security it provides is something called ACLs or access control lists. And ACLs gives us a much granular lower level permissioning. So, so whereas on the class level permissions, you would specify uh, rules for every instance of the class player. With the ACLs, you can specify specific rules just for one particular player object. Okay, so let's go through these one at a time. So if we go back into our server code and we go into the security setting section, you can see this is where we specify the app ID and master key through the environment variables. I mean, and we went through this when we set up the uh, project on Heroku. But you can see above it, there's also another setting called allow 
client class creation if I uncomment that and this is the setting that specifies whether you would allow clients to create classes or whether we lock that down now by default it's set to false but if we provide an environment variable called client class creation in our Heroku config and we set that to true for instance it would then allow clients to create classes so that's how you set up the second security mechanism which is client class creation now let's look at class level permissioning now to do that we have to look at the parse dashboard